the beauty of the seashore is that all four elements come together. The earth, which is the sand, of course, the water, the ocean, uh, the air, the beautiful breeze that blows all day, and the fire coming from the sun. And that's why the ocean is so wonderful. It's the nexus of all the four elements and their qualities. So now we're going to explain this uh, in a little bit of quieter spot. <laughs> Namaste. So, chi and the five elements are very closely connected. There can be five kinds of chi because there are five elements, huh? or five, I should say, five flavors, because the elements only condition the chi. Chi is always chi, <laughs> life energy. But it can have different flavors and different effects depending upon the elements. But what are the five elements? Earth, water, fire, air, and Akash, which some people translate as ether, but that's an obsolete term. And others translate it as space, uh, which is better. <laughs> but really, Akash is emptiness, uh, the primordial emptiness in which everything exists. So the ancient Chinese symbol for qi, uh, the character, is actually two characters combined. On top is the character for nothing, emptiness. And below is the character for fire. Now, according to tradition, this implies that the organs, when they are supplied with the proper amount and kind of chi, do not get hot. Huh? They're empty of fire. They're cool. But I like another interpretation, which is that the emptiness refers to the consciousness of one who is cultivating chi. So the fire in the belly, huh? the fire in the belly uh, in Chinese medicine is called the triple warmer. And it really means the first three chakras in the Indian system. See how it all fits together? <laughs> <laughs> There's this one thing, reality. Then there are all these different systems of terminology that describe it. And all they are is just categories of stuff. So don't get all upset and don't get attached. But just use these different views to understand and regulate your life. Okay? So how do we regulate the chi? If the chi is too hot, we cool it down. If it's too cold, we warm it up. <laughs> if it's stuck, we, we add water. <laughs> Lubrication, right? And if there's too much heaviness or corporeality, huh? earth and water, then we add some wind, air, to lighten things up. Huh? Somebody who's just silly and laughing all the time, we, sometimes we call them an airhead. <laughs> but the air element uh, is very powerful, and you only need a little bit. If there's too much, then the mind can go all over the universe. <laughs> so all these four elements in the body have to be balanced and in their proper places. We're not going to deal with Akash Chi or Space Chi <laughs> because we already did in so many previous episodes, uh, so many previous series concentrating on meditation because that's what Space Chi is. Okay. Now, in the beginning I talked about how the seashore is so wonderful and everybody loves it. Huh? Why? Because all four elements are available in abundance. Earth, water, fire, and air. 
Uh, you can get plenty, as much as you need, <laughs> sometimes too much. Like yesterday, I even got a little sunburn. I thought I was immune to the sun from living in Tamil Nadu and you know, riding on my scooter, <laughs> walking. But no, even I can get sunburn. <laughs> so I'm going to be conditioning my skin and getting ready. So because I love swimming, I just love swimming in the hot time of the day. But anyway, this is the point. You can come to the seashore and balance your chi. So I think I'm going to start a little qigong school here by the ocean. Huh? I looked at some places in India by the ocean, but they weren't so nice. In fact, there are other places even just nearby here that aren't so nice, you know. But this place is gorgeous. The class of people who come here is very nice. And I think I can start. I'm going to call it Beach Bums Qigong. <laughs> I have a little sign down by the beach, you know, where I sit <laughs> and hang out. I'm just going to be a beach bum. So, why? Too much fire. It's too much fire in Tiruvannamalai. It's a fireplace. And yes, my astrologer recommended that I move there because of that. But after three years there and st spending uh, two summers, two full summers there, it's enough. <laughs> enough fire, okay? <laughs> I need to balance my chi too. So I'm planning to take a little house here and uh, in Sri Lanka by the ocean and start a little Qigong school. Y'all, come on down. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the function of the Qi in the human body is to move energy. Now, obviously, all parts of the body need energy. So the Qi follows, more or less, the structure of the body and uh, that means the nerves, uh, the circulatory system, the veins and arteries, the, uh, the bones, the muscles, the tissues. Uh, they're all permeated by the chi. Now, even though the chi basically follows the layout of the, the lymph and the uh, and nerves and stuff like that, it's not identical with them. The chi is actually a non-material energy. Hmm? A non-material energy. <clears throat> I think chi is like the information part of the human body that ties it all together and makes it work, makes it function as a whole. Huh? Sometimes the body is compared to a factory. Uh, Gurdjieff talked about a process of digestion, which includes ordinary food, of course, but also air and even sense impressions. So sense impressions can also be a kind of food, isn't it? They certainly affect our chi, and that's why we like to be in beautiful places. That's why we like to be in the seashore, huh? because the elements affect our chi, and that changes the balance of the chi in the body. So this non-material energy or information can carry quite a bit of energy. And that's why people with high chi development are always very high energy. And this is what we talked about, secret heaven. In secret heaven, the whole emphasis is on raising the energy of the chakras because you need the full energy to attain enlightenment. So where do we begin? With the lower three chakras, because the, those are the energy chakras. That's how the energy is generated and how it then begins its circulation through the body. So the chakras are the anatomy of the subtle body, the energy body. The energy body is made of chi, prana. Okay, So there's some chi that we absorb from food, some that we absorb from breathing. Huh? So the food is what? Earth and water. The breath is air. And of course, then there's fire, there's war warmth. 
temperature, right? The human body likes a temperature of about, well, depending on your metabolism, <laughs> it could be higher or lower. I've seen people in Norway going shirtless in, uh, you know, zero degrees centigrade, uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, freezing weather in the wind, uh, out on a boat, uh, enjoying, like, you know, getting a tan, right? <laughs> Very comfortable. Uh, these same guys can swim in the freezing ocean for, like, you know, a kilometer. They're amazing. And then there's people in South India who work outdoors in the sun all day. And, of course, they have rather short lifespans because their chi is way out of balance. But they can do it. That's the point. <clears throat> These people are comfortable sitting in a room that would, would be way too hot for me. <laughs> so for a Western person who is acclimated to this climate, you can be very comfortable at like 85, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. What's that? Uh, 28 to 32 degrees centigrade. You know, very comfortable temperature. So I try to go shirtless or uh, even less <laughs> as much as possible just to get acclimated to different temperatures and keep my body chi balanced. <clears throat> See, if you never expose your body to air and sun and w what to speak of water and earth, how are you going to adjust your chi? So a natural lifestyle automatically helps us adjust the chi because we get exposure. That's why it's healthy to be outdoors a lot. I, I stay outdoors as much as I can. Even if I do some, some sitting work, if I can sit outdoors in a shady place, that's my preference. That's why I love the roof of my house in Tiruvannamalai. But here, I have the beach. So... If the body is a factory, then it has inputs and outputs. It has food, and it has a process of digestion that produces the finished product. And it also produces waste as a byproduct. Uh, so in a factory, you have many complicated machines. And if anything breaks down, if anything goes wrong, you have to know how the machine is supposed to operate, how it's built, what the different parts do, you know, to be able to repair it. I used to work on big, complicated machines. I used to be a field tech for Hewlett Packard. And I used to work on these big, honking data acquisition systems at government research labs. And, uh, and, and I did a lot more, too. <laughs> I can't talk about it. But, uh, these things, if you do anything wrong, you can, you can blow up the whole machine. <laughs> I've seen it happen. There was a, one machine, a mainframe, that was so big, they had to tear out a wall between two rooms to install the darn thing. <laughs> but then it wouldn't work. So, of course, they call me. <laughs> and I go out there. I can't find out what's wrong. So we call the guy from the factory. One of the engineers, he comes down, spends two or three days, and he can't figure out what's wrong either. And, of course, this is all on warranty, so <laughs> we're under a lot of pressure. Uh, and finally, we're there late, late one night, 6 or 7 o'clock at night. Everybody's gone home. And we're tinkering with this beast. <clears throat> and the old maintenance guy comes in sweeping the floor, mopping the floor, Right? And we're sitting there scratching our heads and beards and whatever, lamenting about <laughs> this machine, this expensive thing isn't working, right? Even though we can't find anything wrong with it. So the old man looks around the room and he says, you know, the power sockets on this side of the room are connected to a different source than on that side of the room. Because usually, before there were two rooms, right? So we looked into it, and we found out that one outlet was connected to the three-phase power, you know, to one of the three phases, and the other outlet was connected to a, a different phase. So we had the two 
the electricity coming in was out of phase. What was it? 120 degrees out of phase. And because in those days, the clock signal was generated from the power, the whole thing would, wouldn't work. There was nothing wrong with it. It just had to be fed the right power. That's the point here. <laughs> so we look at a person's diet, their overall balance, their exercise, uh, their whole life, actually, because the first three chakras are the platform, the foundation, the energy source for the rest of the body. Okay, <clears throat> When the food is digested, the energy winds up in the Dantian, and from there it has to be distributed. Okay, That requires movement, because the chi, the blood, the lymph, all these things are circulated by uh, the movement of the body, as well as other things. Gurdjieff made the uh, simile. Imagine a carriage or a car, and the lubrication system for the car is operated by when the car goes over a bump, like there's a pump connected to the suspension, the shock absorbers. And when the car goes over a bump, it pumps the lubricating fluid to lubricate the whole mechanism. So if you go on a road that's too smooth, the car will break because no lubrication. <laughs> the car requires some bumps. Huh? You can't have just a completely smooth, easy life. It would kill you. Why? Because some impact, some shocks, some movement, some effort is necessary to circulate the chi in the body uh, and get the optimum balance of chi for health, consciousness, and enlightenment. Om Tat Sat. Buddha Saranai.